Hi, I'm Charlotte. And I'm Scott. And this is... Magnolia. Magnolia. And this is Elsie. Welcome to Light Church Online. We hope you enjoy our video today. Oh 
says in Psalm 92, It's so enjoyable to come before you with uncontainable praises spilling from our hearts. How we love to sing our praises over and over to you. To the Lord God, high and exalted over all. At each and every sunrise, we will be thanking you for your kindness and your love. And as the sun sets and all through the night, we will keep proclaiming, you are so faithful. Let melodies of praise fill the air as every musical instrument joined with every heart overflows in worship.
Welcome again to Light Church Online. We're so glad that you um, joined us today. How good was the worship this morning? Um, for those who have been asking, um, we do have a giving SMS number, which will be um, linked on the screen. And also on our, our website, right, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the website, there's a little button that says give online and you can give um, that way too, if you feel that way inclined. Uh, yesterday was Anzac Day. And so we're going to use this moment just to reflect and honour those who have served and um, fought for our country. Usually on Anzac Day, I'm happy to say that many of our Peninsula community pay their respects at the various dawn services around our Peninsula. But this year is very different. We can't gather in our usual way, but we can still offer our respect and our tributes. Today I'm at Sturt Bay on the south coast of York Peninsula. In January 1917, 103 years ago, a bottle was found washed up on this beach. Inside that bottle was a message, and it was written seven months earlier in June 1916. 19-year-old Will Williams had penned a, a message to his family. He was heading from Adelaide to Europe on a transport ship somewhere off the South Australian coast. He sealed the bottle in a, uh, sealed a message in a bottle and threw it into the Southern Ocean. He had written a note as part of that message asking anyone who found the message to please forward it on to his family in Victoria. And the message to his family simply read this, to my mum and dad, full stop, all is well, full stop, Everything going A1, full stop, don't worry. This message was found by one of our locals and it finally reached its destination to his family in Hawthorne, Victoria. Often the young men uh, at that time had little opportunity to contact their relatives when the, the call to sale had been given. Uh, they were sometimes told at very late notice and they didn't have a chance to even say goodbye. But just weeks after these words were finally received by his family, his family received another message. It was the tragic news of his death. The same news that thousands of families who lost sons and brothers and family members in Europe would have received as well. See, Will was first wounded in action and partially buried in the trenches of France on Christmas Eve in 1916 and he was treated for his injuries and, and actually returned on New Year's Day. And sadly, a trench collapsed after some artillery uh, fire and Will became stuck and he finally was killed by the bull of a, of a sniper. This is just one of the tragic, heart-wrenching stories that's been uncovered from Gallipoli and the conflict since. Uh, there must be many similar stories with, with a local York Peninsula connection. Stories like this really should give us a fresh perspective, uh, and a new perspective on the struggles we are currently facing. You know, the pressures that many are feeling just at the moment through our COVID-19 crisis are, are, are very real, but on Anzac Day, we remember those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. So while usually we're laying wreaths and Anzac Day services, having that moment of silence while the last post is playing, often we pray the prayer of remembrance or remember those words from the Gospel of John that there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for their friends. This year we do it in a different way. We still offer our respect. We honour those who have served. We do it with reverence. Lest we forget.
Over the last couple of weeks at Light Church, we've been reading the Gospel of Mark, and this week we've been reading chapters three to about five. And in that time, we've noticed that Jesus healed lots of people. Um, great crowds started to follow him, and we uh, start to see the parables of Jesus. And parables are, are stories that explain or illustrate something. Um, some people read the parables of Jesus as if their story is just about morals. And there are morals in the parables, like the, the parable of the Good Samaritan. But they're not just a moral lesson. As, as kids, sometimes we're taught that parables are an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. But that gives the idea that parables are, are something that are just for the future or when we die and go to heaven. But actually, when Jesus told the parables, he was often giving commentary on what was happening at the time. And Jesus was preaching the kingdom of God is near or the kingdom of God is, is now or at hand. And the parables were showing people what the kingdom of God was like. When Jesus is king, this is what it looks like. And so he was trying to help people understand what the kingdom was all about. And there were also pictures of the, of the world uh, what it would look like when Jesus is king. And the parables actually even change focus as, as time goes nearer towards the cross. They become more uh, provocative, for instance, like the, Jesus talks about the parable of the vineyard where the vineyard workers killed the son who owned the, of the owner of the vineyard. And it was a picture of what was going to happen around the cross. And the Jewish leaders knew that that was directed at them and, and they plotted to kill Jesus. So when you read the parables, you know, ask these sort of questions. What is this saying about Jesus? What is it saying about the kingdom of God? Because uh, the kingdom of God is often an upside down value system compared to uh, the kingdom we set up. And then ask, okay, how does this relate to me personally? Now the Gospel of Mark says that Jesus never taught without a parable, so he often used stories. And I want to use the Anzac Day story I shared earlier in this video about Will Williams as a parable, maybe the parable of the message in the bottle. And that message took a long time to find its way home. It was thrown into the ocean and um, delivered by someone who just stumbled upon it when they were walking along the beach. And I wonder sometimes if we've left the message of the gospel in a bottle, waiting for another time. Uh, maybe it's got lost in the sea or, or we don't think it's relevant for actually now. When Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven in particular or the kingdom of God, we can make a mistake of thinking that um, it's all about what happens when we die, when I get to heaven. It's just an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Um, but if, and if the message is about the afterlife then there's no hurry to respond. Um, I'll leave the message in the bottle for a while. I'll put the religious stuff off and uh, live my life now. And when I get a bit older, I might 
attend to those things. But the message of Jesus was the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus was there and where the king is, that's where the kingdom is. And wherever Jesus is ruling and whenever uh, his power and his character is demonstrated, that's where the kingdom of God is. And Jesus came to give us a new way of living now, not just talking about the afterlife or heaven. The message of the kingdom is for now. Um, and we can live under the smile and the benefits of the kingdom, the smile of the king, right now. And now is the time to hear and respond to the message. Uh, the message of the kingdom is about forgiveness and about wholeness, about reconciliation, about life with God, about uh, justice and looking after one another. And the message is that you can live with Jesus as your king now. And he wants to change our now, not just our afterlife. Jesus said, I come, I've come to give you life in all its abundance. And we respond to that message by welcoming Jesus as king. And if Jesus is king, that means other things might need to get off the throne. Things like self. Uh, when we make Jesus king, we surrender our will to his will. It's a new way of living, or as the Bible puts it, a, a new and life-giving way. And we do that as we worship, maybe in a formal setting, uh, but we also do it as we live our everyday life as an expression of worship. Living before the king, representing the king, empowered by the king, and also knowing and communicating and having like a, a relationship with the king. And we join with others in his kingdom and that's what the church is all about. We even pray that prayer, Lord, let your kingdom come now as it is in heaven. And the benefits, benefits of the kingdom are, you know, his presence, his power, the Holy Spirit with us, his provision. And there's a lot about forgiveness in the kingdom. Jesus talks about that a lot because Forgiveness is one of the greatest ways we become free ourselves. And when we forgive others, we also become free and free others. And it's so important and so central to the message. So let me ask you, do, do you understand that the kingdom of God or the message of the kingdom is for your now? It's not just something f for another time. Will you receive and embrace the message or just leave it like that message in the bottle floating somewhere waiting for it to, to hit its mark? In the couple of chapters we looked up in Mark this week, there was also a bit of conflict. When Jesus is king, it often upsets the status quo of life. Uh, the religious leaders were, were challenged and they claimed that Jesus healed or cast out demons um, through the power of the devil. Well, that's one way of um, dismissing the message, saying it's not from God. And then you don't have to deal with it. But even his own family reacted to what was happening. Because Jesus became very popular, lots of people were coming in um, and uh, it was upsetting their world and, and their family even said amongst themselves, I think Jesus has lost his mind. Wow. They didn't understand who Jesus was and later on in the, in the storyline uh, we find that Jesus' brothers actually became leaders in the church. I wonder how many times I've heard it when someone starts to follow Jesus, a family member say, I think that person's lost their mind. A new king will upset or rearrange things in our life because new kings dethrone old rulers. Things like self and pride and ambition and lots of things rule us. Money, opinion, habits, mindsets. Now, when Jesus was king, it upset the status quo. Mark chapter 5, we read about a man possessed by, by many, many demons. He was a very scary person. It says he ran around naked, he lived in the graveyard. When they tried to chain him up, he'd break the chains. It's the stuff of a horror movie. He's one scary person. But Jesus healed him and it said, the people found the man sitting, fully clothed, perfectly sane, peaceful. That's an incredible transformation. But the reaction to the people is, is startling. It said... And all the people were afraid because he was calm and sane. Well, I would have been afraid of him earlier, but they were afraid of the new version. Why? Because the power of Jesus 
changes the status quo. But there's no need to be scared of the healing and the wholeness and the power of Jesus because that change is good. How will you respond to the message? The kingdom of God is near because it's near to you. And you can reach out and touch it and you can actually receive the king of the kingdom. And my prayer is that you'll embrace the king and welcome him into your life. Let's pray. Lord, I pray for every person watching here. Let each one embrace the king and welcome him into their life. I thank you for the forgiveness that happens, the wholeness, the restoration that comes because of that and that we can know our God as our Lord and Saviour. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us today. Um, right after this message, we're going to have Sunday Zoom at 11 o'clock. And uh, we invite you, if you want to be part of Sunday Zoom at Light Church, go to our website, lightchurch.co, and you'll find the link and, and the password to Sunday Zoom. See you later.